Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good evening, I'm Madison Carmouche. Israel has rescued four hostages from central Gaza eight months after they were kidnapped by Hamas terrorists at a music festival. The rescue mission was the largest since Israel declared war on Hamas and the U.S. assisted. Natalie Brand has the latest from Washington. People in Israel danced in the street celebrating the rescue of four hostages held captive by Hamas for eight months. Israel Defense Forces released this video it says was taken right after the daytime raid on the Gaza Strip that freed 25-year-old Noah Argamani. They also brought to safety 21-year-old Almag Mayir, 27-year-old Andre Kozlov and 40-year-old Shlomi Ziv. All four were taken by helicopter for medical checkups before being reunited with their loved ones. Oh. Argamani's father praised Israel's army as did the mother of another hostage. Thank you for bringing my son to me. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowed Israel will not stop until Hamas releases the remaining 120 hostages it's believed to be still holding. But if they don't, I'll do whatever it takes to get them all back home. President Biden congratulated Israel on the successful rescue during a news conference with France's president. We won't stop working until all the hostages come home and a ceasefire is reached. That is essential to happen. In Washington, D.C., thousands protested the war, hoping to send a message to the Biden administration. They formed a red line around the White House, calling for an end to U.S. military aid to Israel and also for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. I'm here on behalf of every child who was shot, killed or murdered these past eight months. Israelis have rejected the term ceasefire, but as negotiations continue, CBS News has learned they would be open to naming it a sustainable calm. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. The White House says the U.S. provided support for the successful rescue mission. CBS has learned it came mainly in the form of intelligence support and the U.S. military did not participate. Palestinian health officials say at least 210 Palestinians, including women and children, were killed in today's Israeli raids. New information on a case involving a Kentucky murder suspect. Stephen Shang, Shang Shang is accused of killing Scott County Deputy Caleb Conley a year ago during a traffic stop on I-75. He's pleaded not guilty in that case. Last month, he pleaded guilty to burglary and assistant felony offender charges in a separate case in northern Kentucky. He's set to be sentenced on those charges on Monday. Shian Shang faces 10 to 20 years. Prosecutors are calling it an, quote, insurance policy, pending several other cases in at least three other Kentucky counties. Last week, Pikeville police were notified of a car break-in on 2nd Street. The victims reported several items were stolen as a result. We asked officials with the Pikeville Police Department what you can do to prevent these types of crimes from happening to you. Uh, just make sure that you don't park your vehicles in unlit areas. Uh, if you can, if at all possible, if you can park somewhere where there is cameras, uh, do that. Make sure you always lock your vehicle. Uh, don't leave any um, items in plain view or somebody can see it from outside the vehicle. Uh, cell phones, uh, laptops, uh, game systems, anything of, of value, just don't leave it out. The investigation is ongoing and officials with Pikeville Police ask you to call 606-437-5111 if you have any tips that can help with the investigation. Well, it's a warm night across our area. We take a look at current temperatures out there right now, generally into the upper 60s, even some low 70s. 70 in Jackson, Hazard 67 in Manchester. We are 69 in Harlan, 68 for London, 67 in Williamsburg, 71 in Somerset and Lexington, 68 in Irvine, and 70 in Moorhead. As we work through the rest of tonight, we are going to see temperatures fall down generally into the mid 60s across our area as we'll continue to see cloudy skies. And it is going to stay quite mild for the rest of the night. We look at the day tomorrow and we're going to start out 
feeling like the 60s across our area and then turning more into the low to mid 70s in the afternoon, at least with those feel like temperatures or highs are going to be in the mid to upper 70s and we're going to have those rain showers around at least and especially in southern Kentucky. Um, as we'll be dodging that from time to time. We look at our weather timeline. We're talking about cloudy skies for tonight. Scattered showers for your Sunday. Monday will be mostly sunny and pleasant and more the same on Tuesday. And then we look at Wednesday and we're going to start warming up and temperatures are just going to continue to go up from there. I'll break down the full forecast coming up. All right, Ben, thank you. The remote area medical clinic is in Perry County for the weekend, helping hundreds of people gain access to medical, dental and vision care. Clinic coordinator Heli Vadito says it, it could not be done without volunteers helping the community through the event, adding it also is good to help the next generation of healthcare professionals gain experience. So our event would not be possible without our volunteers. They're all here with the kindness of their heart. Um, we have great volunteers in all areas from all over to come and help the community. So we have all different kinds of providers as well as students here. It's a great learning opportunity for those who are younger. Um, it's a great field for them to get into and learn. The clinic ends tomorrow. Vidado says they will be open at 6 a.m. tomorrow, adding the earlier the people show up, the better. One Louisville business got a head start on Juneteenth celebrations. Republic Bank had a bunch of free health screenings and educational activities to improve the lives of people living in the West End. They also installed a little library to promote reading. One of the organizers says events like these matter so much to the African American community. The country veteran veteran the Country Veterinarian Hospital celebrated its 30th anniversary this afternoon. The celebration served two purposes, to appreciate 30 years of service to families and pets in Prestonsburg and to raise funds for a cause which was once held dear by a close friend of the staff of the hospital, Kim Lee. Her biggest goal was to help the animals that otherwise wouldn't get care. The ones that may be tough, the ones that may be hard to handle, the ones that, you know, may not necessarily find a home in other places. And she made it her, her job and her duty, whether she was a nurse at Highlands uh, for quite a few years and she would get off work uh, first thing in the morning and would go and climb in drainage holes, climb in sewages or whatever it was to find a animal that needed help. The funds raised at the celebration will also be used to help neuter and spay pets to help combat the increasing overcrowding crisis at animal shelters throughout Kentucky. Things got a little cheesy in Clark County today with the 14th annual Winchester Beer Cheese Festival. The event featured dozens of vendors as well as live music and other activities. Back in 2013, Clark County was officially recognized by the Commonwealth of Kentucky as the birthplace of beer cheese. History says the unique salty spicy spread was created by Chef Joe Allman for the owner of the Driftwood Inn back in the late 1930s. Event organizers say it is the only festival of its kind. Not only is this festival full and celebrated the locals, we bring a lot of people from out of town to discover what's special about Winchester. And not only is our beer cheese special, but we have a lot of downtown charm. She adds anyone who participated in the beer cheese tasting will be able to vote and a winner will be announced to see who has the best beer cheese. Two weeks after hosting the longest running festival in the Commonwealth, Pineville was home to another festival, one that brought hundreds of people to the mountains. WYMT's Jack Demler has more. Bringing a music festival. One way the music, it's just a lake. It's all in the air. It's just, it's wonderful. To the mountains. We're just uh, a group of friends that all like live music. We all enjoy going to festivals. We all wanted to see a music festival, a high quality music festival here in Bell County in our home. A festival that saw a sellout crowd as quickly as tickets became available. I thought our website was broke. And I said, I think our uh, ticketing system is messing up. And he said, well, I'm in it and all the tickets are gone. And I said, that's impossible. Dave, I've been on sale three minutes. And he said, no, they're gone. And they were gone. The fifth annual Laurel Cove Music Festival gave music fans a meaningful experience. 
It means so much to me because I love music and to have it close to home, it's, it's incredible. And the musicians, an experience they will never forget. It feels like, you know, I'm getting away with something a little bit because I'm a huge fan of all these guys, uh, the whole band. We're all super big fans of all the other acts that have come through here and certainly uh, some of the acts that have also come through here in previous years. I mean, legendary, legendary people. Sharing the music of the mountains. I love that our roots are getting shown to other people and that so many people are getting to hear what we have to offer. In the mountains, in Pineville. Fall in a darkest hollow, need of a crow. Jack Demler, WYMT Mountain News. John Grace says they can't really grow the music festival from a capacity standpoint, but says the focus is on fine-tuning things. Coming up at 11, for all boxing fans out there, a big matchup in the ring was postponed due to one of the boxers experiencing health issues.